Okay, hello everybody. Um, I can't believe that it's actually almost two and a half years since I stood up in this exact same spot <laughs> pitching this. The time has absolutely flown. I'm sure we all remember that day. Um, anyway, here we are two years in and almost done. So we're going to tell you today about uh, where we are now and uh, what we've achieved. So, um, as I said, our, our, our project is supporting transition, enhancing feedback in first year using digital technologies, or as I'm sure you know by now, why one feedback? So just to say up front that this is a collaborative project between um, Maynooth University at Lone Institute of Technology, DCU and Dundalk Institute of Technology. And together we've been working on technology enhanced uh, feedback approaches for first year over the last uh, two years. So what did we set out to do? So as I said, we wanted to enhance feedback practice in first year, and we wanted to do that by identifying um, feedback approaches that worked for first year, that supported student learning and student transition to higher education, and that after identifying those approaches, that we would develop case studies of those in practice. So um, how are we going to do that? So this is what we had hoped to achieve, and I'm very glad to say that we have achieved this. Um, we said we'd find out what was happening on the ground, find out what was happening in relation to feedback in our institutions, that we'd look at the literature, see what uh, was happening there, that we would identify approaches for feedback in first year, um, that we would develop a suite of 16 case studies between us, and that we would host a feedback in first year symposium to disseminate um, our learning and our outputs. So this is what we set out to do, and I'm just going to signpost you through um, our key outputs. I don't have time today to go in, in detail, but they are all available online. So first and foremost, we have our first publication, which is Feedback in First Year, a landscape snapshot. Um, we worked with the Students' Union to conduct stu uh, focus groups uh, across first year um, to see what the experience um, was of for, uh, for first year students, what feedback they were getting, and then we did an online survey with staff, and the results are available here. Um, next job, we looked at the literature. Um, we looked at the literature in relation to transitions, to first year, to first year in feedback. We looked at contemporary perspectives on feedback, and we also looked at feedback in relation, our technology in relation to feedback, and what approaches were being trialled out there. Um, uh, our publication is available on our, we on our website also. Um, just to say that we've received great feedback and engagement with this publication. For example, David Carlos has commended us on our work, describing it as an excellent comprehensive review. And there are a number of postgraduate diploma higher education um, programs across the country now incorporating this into their programs. Um, a key part of our work was to identify a framework for thinking about free, uh, feedback in first year. And what we did was identify a series of features of effective feedback for first year. Um, I'm not going to go through these here today. We've, we've gone through them on other occasions. Um, but just to say um, that in conjunction with this, we developed a series of approaches, or not developed them, but identified them. Um, approaches that particularly work for students in first year um, and that support student learning and student transition. Um, throughout this process, we have been encouraged to um, look at student engagement with feedback and the student role of feedback. And I'd like to underscore that all these approaches are underpinned by student-led pedagogies, in particular um, dialogic feedback, um, moving away from the teacher-led approaches um, uh, with feedback, um, where students become active participants in the feedback process, working with peers, but ultimately um, moving towards sustainable feedback, um, supporting and scaffolding students' development as self-regulated learner learners and developing their capacity in um, evaluative judgment. And these have been key to all these approaches and all our case studies throughout. So we identified the features, the approaches, now we had to put it into practice. So what we tried to do was take the literature, take what we had found out and put this into practice. And working with um, a fantastic group of feedback champions across the four institutes, we're really proud to say we've developed 40, our 24 uh, Y1 feedback case studies. These are available all on our website. Um, I suppose I would like to say that on the face of it, these might just look like 24 videos or 24 little reports, but these represent 24 teams of people engaging um, in a holistic way 
um, about assessment and feedback. We didn't just look at the um, feedback approaches with these champions. We looked at the module. We looked at the teaching, the learning, and the assessment feedback processes in general. So um, I, j I can't go into all of these today. I'd love to bore you, to be honest, and tell, tell you all about each and every one of them. But just to give you a sample, um, just to say each case study includes a three to four minute video um, where the feedback champions describe their uh, challenge, the aim, and um, what they did and how, how, how it went. Um, each one is accompanied by a report and uh, taking on the feedback um, from the panel, we did reduce the size of, of the reports while still maintaining, I suppose, uh, the, the integrity of the case studies and uh, the, I suppose, the research-based uh, approach we took with all this work. Um, so these are just some examples. Formative and summative feedback using Moodle marking guide. Um, flipping feedback uh, with a multi-stage assignment. Just to say, each of these approaches, or each of these case studies, usually didn't concentrate on just one approach. They blended them together to suit the module. Um, another one, assessment and feedback in chemistry laboratories. Uh, voice thread enabling peer feedback in first-year computer engineering. I hope you're getting, just even from the titles of those, the sense of the range of case studies um, involved, the range of uh, disciplines. I think we had over 16 disciplines, 32 academic partners, um, just to uh, illustrate the, de the breadth of the case studies. Um, so, at this point, it's time for me to be quiet, and let's hear from one of the case studies, I think. Okay, so it was really hard to choose one. So we're going to hear, I'm going to say okay. Now, we'll get it down here. Okay, very good. Screencast feedback. I decided to move my feedback from the end of the module. Okay, so we're going to give you uh, a chance to tell us. So we'll just move this back. And it's apt that this is an audiovisual uh, challenge when uh, this is an audiovisual case study in, in ways. Okay, so let's hear from David. My name is David Cranny. I'm from the School of Business and Humanities at the Dundalk Institute of Technology. The feedback challenge that I hope to address was trying to get first-year students to engage with the feedback that I was providing to them. The feedback approach that I elected to use was using a multi-stage assessment mm -hmm. using screencast feedback. I decided to move my feedback from the end of the module to the middle, hence the multi-stage. It was a, a two-fold approach. The aim was threefold. Firstly, was to explore student engagement with screencast feedback. Secondly, to investigate students' perceptions of receiving feedback by a screencast. And thirdly, was to create a set of guidelines for practitioners wishing to adopt it or to try it. It went very, very well. Um, the big thing that we found out from it was that students were engaging with the feedback provided by Screencast multiple ways. Firstly, students were viewing their Screencast feedback uh, on average three or four times. Secondly, and more importantly, was they were applying the feedback that was provided to them to their summative submissions, so to their secondary submissions. Um, so this clearly indicated that the students were in engaging by viewing it and engaging by applying it. It was very much like a one-to-one -one meeting with a laptop, I suppose. So they liked the nice conversational tone that came across quite clearly in the, in the screencast. They liked the fact that they knew where to access their screencast because it was on the, uh, on the VLE Moodle. They liked the fact that with a couple of clicks, they could view it. But also they liked the fact that they could pause, rewind, and view multiple times. And in, the, in that case, they could apply and make the changes as they were going along. Be yourself. Students aren't pre 
uh, expecting you to be a professional broadcaster. Students like the nice conversational tone that comes across uh, in your screencasts. They feel like it's a one-to-one -one meeting between you and them. The feedback that we provide our students aids them also in the transition from second level into third level. It enables them to see where they are at to, so that they can engage where they are in relation to their performance on the programs. Likewise, for lecturers, it provides you with an indication of how your students are performing. So it can enable you to effectively uh, tweak or um, adjust your, your teaching to facilitate further improvement for your students and also for further improvement in your own best practice delivery also. Okay, so instead of trying to give you a, an in-depth overview of many of the case studies, I just wanted to show you one and I hope that gives you a sense of, uh, of what our case studies are, are like. Um, and I suppose what's important about these case studies is they're like the, I suppose, the studies is they're an Irish contribution to the literature and they are in the Irish context and, and, of, rele and of relevance to everyone, but particularly of interest to other people working in the same context. So, um, our next step was to um, engage, I suppose, the wider um, national community in the conversation on feedback. And on the 27th of January, um, we held the uh, Enhancing Feedback in First Year Symposium. And uh, this is just a few pictures to give you a sense of the event. Um, we had uh, 130 attendees and we were delighted with the buzz and the engagement of everyone who attended. So you can, uh, at the uh, event, we shared uh, copies of our case studies reports, we shared copies of our literature um, with all the attendees as well. So you can see, the, see some of it there. Okay, so um, a little bit more about the symposium. Uh, just to say that uh, we had four great speakers. Uh, David Carlos opened it for us, Naomi Winstone, um, uh, David Nicholl and Tansy Jessup um, were all amazing keynotes and we've had great feedback um, from all the attendees on their contribution. At the centre of the day was our Y1 Feedback Champions. Um, each of the case study uh, people or each of the feedback champions presented their, uh, their case study in a rapid fire uh, five minutes, or feedback fives we call them. And uh, I can, uh, the engagement around those sessions and the discussions was really rich and I think everyone got a lot out of them. Um, here's just a few of our uh, feedback champions receiving their little uh, box of chocolates as a thank you for all their hard, hard work on this. And uh, at the end of the day, we had a panel, our institutional panel reflections um, with student representatives and uh, registrars from our institutions. And it was a really good discussion. Um, two minutes? Okay, I'm going to be really quick. Might see if I can get an extra two minutes out of you if you don't mind, as I usually do. Uh, we were so delighted, we were trending number one on Twitter that morning, which is uh, great. And overall, we had excellent feedback on the symposium. And as you can see, there was a lot of Twitter activity on the day. I'll just show this very briefly. As I said, we had great feedback. The keynotes, panel discussions, best symposium I've attended. And underneath here, we have the key takeaways. Um, program level, the need to focus there. The need to involve students more in the assessment of feedback process less con uh, content and more time on feedback. These are the key takeaways for our participants. Um, okay, I'm definitely going to need those two minutes. Um, impact and dissemination, we are sharing all our um, outputs via our uh, website and via Twitter. Um, publications, I've mentioned some of these already, but we have two publications, 24 case study reports, 23 videos. We've published in the uh, HJ um, Journal, TARC 216, and we've also presented an Ask Line paper. Here is a sense of, the con of how we have disseminated. Hopefully you will see from this that our dissemination has been um, wide over the two years. Uh, we, our first one out, we won Best Poster, and our most recent one, we were invited to present at the University of Bath Assessment and Feedback Conference. So, uh, this is a little more, we've done a lot of work on the ground, workshops, working with people, and as you can see, an estimated 30 local feedback-related workshops. 
Um, we have made contact with similar projects in Australia, the Feedback for Learning, and uh, we've been working nationally on other projects as well. So, in terms of our feedback champions, as you can see, there are several of them and approximately 90% of them will continue to use these approaches or are adapting them um, for continued use, which is a great statistic. Here is what our symposium sent Isa said. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. What this shows here is people from the symposium actually taking away key ideas and implementing them in practice almost immediately. Someone's going to use screencasting. Somebody has already uh, put into practice peer review in their teaching. Um, this is in the space of two weeks. Okay, so we're really delighted with this. The team, I guess, oh, this has been an incredible learning journey for us all, I think. Um, we've developed a number of competencies in relation to feedback, uh, literature review, project management, uh, collaboration, and I think these are all evidenced through our successful partnership, but also on delivering and exceeding um, our project outcomes. And uh, sometimes we look like this, but usually we look like this. <laughs> okay, so not always done up. Um, I suppose the key thing and how we have evolved is that we did start out focusing on technology. We admit this, but what it has turned out is that we have been focused on approaches and focused on students. And uh, this uh, has been, I suppose, a good thing for, sh for sure, but uh, definitely a clear evolution, which I hope you'll have seen in our work. I suppose as well, a lot of the outputs would have grown a little, which we didn't uh, anticipate, but for, but for the better. Uh, planning for sustainability, the key thing for us now is our case studies are all in completion and it's about communicating them. We will do a Twitter drive, we will do a website drive, we're just uh, in the final stages of working on our website and we're putting in a tagging system so that the, uh, the case studies will be categorised. Um, we've got a number of webinars planned, we are holding another seminar in April, um, we're going to present at EdTech and we have a paper submitted to the uh, AHE conference in Manchester during the summer, so hopefully we get accepted, I'm sure we will. Um, there are a number, this project doesn't stop here, each of us are very passionate about this area and we will continue our work and um, we have a number of initiatives planned um, incorporated into programmes, a number of uh, local showcases and um, however we, were, we would definitely uh, welcome a further call to look in detail at programmatic approaches to feedback and student engagement to feedback. So hint, hint, Terry, it's Sarah. And at last, I'm sure I've gone over, but hopefully you'll be kind as I'm the last one and you were running a little bit uh, ahead of time. I just want to say thank you, uh, particularly to the forum for the funding, for the panel, for your feedback, but also to our institutions for uh, their support. And by no means least, uh, our second least, the feedback champions who engaged with us, gave us their time, and were so enthusiastic. So thank you to each and every feedback champion and feedback champion team. Uh, and last, the team. Uh, just to say a big thank you to them. They were absolutely amazing. Uh, so thank you everybody for listening.